One of my favorite things about Tag Back, the show where every week we take a look at a blaster from the past to see what it can offer us today in the present, is how much my opinion can change between selecting what blaster I'm going to talk about to the time where I actually sit down and start filming the episode. Because when it comes to the Dark Tag Hyperfire, I pretty much just wrote it off as junk. A lot of people have requested this blaster, and I think it's just because it shares a similar name to, well, the new blaster. That's the new hotness, which is, of course, the End Strike Elite Hyperfire. But they're completely different blasters, and that's something Nerf has had going on for a long time. I mean, they made a Nightfinder called the Fire Strike, and then they made a Nightfinder sequel that's called the Fire Strike. It's kind of weird how they do stuff like that. But the second I kind of picked up this blaster and started fiddling with it, even though I knew everything, I, at least I thought I knew everything about it, the more I started to really like it. I can see why some people have fond memories of this thing. I mean, it's kind of weird looking. It reminds you of maybe a Twisted Spinner from Boomco or something like that. And this forward pump grip is completely useless because that's not actually how you prime the blaster. It's got a pullback slide, kind of like a Maverick or something like that. But unlike a Maverick or something like that, this is direct plunger. Yes. It is possible to put a bigger spring and make this thing pretty darn good, and there are some features about it I actually really like. But this thing's from 2004. That's a very, very long time to have made a blaster. It pretty much was made up until 2009 or so, when a whole bunch of other blasters came out and pretty much replaced it, especially with the new Dart Tag line, which are some of my favorite blasters in the entirety of Nerf. You got the Speed Load 6, the Quick 16, the Swarm Fire, the Speed Swarm. They're all blasters I really love that all have kind of a unique gimmick to them, and they all fired this dart, which is the Tagger Dart. Now, of course, these are Tagger Darts, but they're not the ones that came with this blaster. This kind of white and blue tip is what came with the newer Dart Tag line. But I really, really like these things. They're really weighty darts that work really good in blowguns and stuff like that. They fly really well, they whistle, they do everything you need them to, and they're pretty darn durable. But most importantly, the fact that these darts have Velcro tips on the end of them means they will stick to the kind of wooly dart tag jerseys, and that was the whole game of dart tag, was it was tag, you just had to stick darts to the other opponents, you know, best. Really easy. And they came with glasses and everything like that because it was supposed to be some kind of competition. In fact, Nerf actually had sanctioned competitions for dart tag. How would you know this one's called the Hyperfire? You wouldn't, not unless you looked it up. And that's kind of a theme that runs with the older Dart Tag line, is a lot of the blasters don't have names or anything on them, and it's almost impossible to figure out what they're called unless you just look up Dart Tag in this case, which emblazons it proudly on the side of the blaster, although there's no paint applications on it, so it's kind of hard to see. How does this thing work? Well, it's got a 10 dart rotating cylinder, and for the size it is, that's pretty good. 10 darts in a small, pretty compact package like this, I'm not gonna complain too much. I hate this foregrip, it should pretty much be removed, but it's not bad. But you have to pull back this slide right here, and that will prime the blaster. And again, it is direct plunger. Now, the internals kinda look something like this. I found a picture on Google, cause I don't really wanna take a whole bunch of time to take this one apart. But as you can see, there's kind of a hook on the back of it, that's how it primes back. And the catch is really, really weird because of where the trigger is located. That doesn't bode too well to a spring upgrade. Now, if you really wanted to get this thing hitting hard, you could, of course, completely redo the internals. You could pop a night finder in there and prime it like that if you really wanted to. But it's not bad. It honestly is. And just like the Firefly, I was really impressed this thing was, in all intents and purposes, a better Maverick. I mean, what's not to like? It has, well, bad performance, but still better than Maverick in my opinion. And it came out kind of around the same time. And I now understand why people like this blaster. The grip is kind of weird. It has that two finger trigger that the dark tag line kind of likes to do, but it's very big. It's comfortable for kids and adults. I like it. I, I was expecting to hate this thing. One of the things I like the most about it is that it does just like a Maverick rotate the cylinder on the trigger pull which, in my opinion, works really darn well. And they whistle. That's the best part. I do like this blaster. I kind of wish it hit a little bit harder. I don't know why they included this foregrip, because, of course, when you're holding the thing, well, you have to 
pull back on that. So you're probably gonna hold it like this to maximize your shots and, well, this just seems like an afterthought. But it is kind of cool, not that this is very ergonomic. I mean, you can see some of these like finger grooves right there, but then this hard whatever you call it in the back, the ribbing is, it's, and it's, it slopes down. It's just not very good in my opinion, but it looks cool. If you want to just cut off this, it's just a big old revolver, and I like this horn on the front of it. It's got just the front post, it doesn't have any back posts. I don't know why they keep doing that. I don't even know why they have sights on these things, to be honest. And it does have a tactical rail, which is crazy to me. Again, 2004 has a tactical rail. This is before the long shot. That's really, really crazy to me. The Dirt Tag Hyperfire is pretty good. Would I recommend you picking one up? Not entirely. I don't really think it's worth picking up and I never picked one up, but I can see why some people have fond memories of it. And sometimes that's all you need. I tried looking for some pretty crazy mods on this thing and I didn't really find a whole lot, which is a shame because like I said, this cylinder in the front works pretty darn good in my opinion. It's direct plunger. I mean, it's perfectly capable of taking a better spring and having a good upgrade and hitting harder than most of the things in the entire line and it didn't really take off that much. I mean, people did modify them, but it just seems like a quick and easy blaster that you could modify it. If you really liked this thing, I mean, it came in a wide variety of flavors. I mean, you've got orange, blue, green, different green. It's an interesting little piece of history. Again, not really all so practical for today, but it's not good, so it's kind of in that weird middle ground of blasters. I mean, yeah, it has its moments, but I don't really think it's worth picking up. Unfortunately, if you want to do something competitive, which some of us do, some of us like to actually stand a chance when we go to a war, and some people just like to do goofy stuff like bread. But it's not really all that suitable for either of them, in my opinion. I mean, it's better than a lot of other blasters, but it's still way worse than a lot of other things, and modification potential is technically there, but you're gonna have to work pretty hard to get anything out of it. I mean, this is a really short draw. That's not very much at all. It's pretty much a 10-shot direct plundered Maverick, and a lot of people like that. I'm indifferent on it. Let me know what you think about the Dark Tag Hyperfire down in the comment section below, and if this is a blaster that you remember fondly, I'd love to hear why. Did I kind of figure out why in my brief playing with this thing? I can kind of see why people like this thing, but maybe there's something else I'm missing. You never know, and that's why I like getting your opinions on these kinds of things. I'm Walcom S7, thank you very much for watching this video, and of course I hope to see you in an entirely different one.